got nine units sitting vacant out of 25 total, and I'm gonna find out why. So why don't we see what- No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't open that. All right. Hey, Bigger Pocket, Steve Rosenberg here. I'm here with my good friend, Matt Trenchard from Senate House Buyers, and we have a special guest, Katie Malford here. Katie is the agent on this property that actually it is going to be up and coming for sale and the owner has been nice enough to allow us to walk this property. Just to give you a little bit of background, this property is northeast of Houston, which is about 10 miles north of downtown. Yeah. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look. This is a 25 unit complex. Nine units of them are vacant. So we're gonna talk about maybe why they're vacant, what the owner did and maybe didn't do. And if you're looking to buy one of these properties, you know, you're gonna get probably a deal, but also understand what you're buying and how to fix the situation. So Matt, what, what do you know about these areas that we're in right now? So this area, we're definitely in one of the middle to lower uh, middle income areas of town. So two bedroom, one bath, probably 700, seven, about 775. 775. Okay. So that's kind of the rent range that you're going to be in. Um, you know, it's a really, really close proximity to downtown. So there, I do think in the the future, there's some upside there. Urban sprawl, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, with it being 25 units, it's seven buildings all kind of conglomerated, which we'll, you'll see in the video later about how it's kind of laid out. And so one of the things we've always found with these small multi-units here is you're kind of in that middle range where you'd really like to have on-site management because there's 25 tenants in one location, but it doesn't quite make enough money in rent for you to justify spending the money on an on-site manager. So it can be kind of tricky yeah. to, to manage. They might make a deal with one of the tenants in place and have them maybe give them a discounted rent and let them manage the property, collect rent, kind of handle maintenance and stuff like that. But I, I don't necessarily know if that's the best idea. That highly depends on the tenant that you have, how much trust, how long have they been there, you know, what's your capacity, all that kind of thing. And maybe you can speak yeah. to that a little more. So the problem is, is when you have a tenant become a manager, they basically are becoming the CEO of your business. Sure. The problem with that is you don't know if they, they know all the laws, you don't know if they know all the regulations, but you're trusting your whole retirement on that. Yeah. So I, I don't like that because sometimes you're in for a, you know, you're in for a trade. They do this, you do that. And you don't really know where to stop that. The problem, as you said, normally they say anything below about 75 units, at least in Houston, you're not gonna be able to have enough cash flow coming in to support an on-site management company. Yeah. So you're in this, you're in this tweener mom and pop scenario where you're kind of using someone, kind of not. And this to me is truly a systematic mm -hmm. challenge because yeah. you've got to make sure you have systems in place so that you don't get nine vacant units right. on a 25 unit because that could really that start hurting you. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So Katie, tell us a little bit about the area and kind of what, what's going on with the situation. So with this property, it's owned by an out of state investor. They were living in Houston. It was easy for them to manage it. Mm -hmm. because they were here, they came and mowed the lawn, they collected the rent, okay. they, they, they did everything themselves, so it cash flowed really nice for them. Yeah. Um, as soon as they moved out of state, <laughs> and it got taken over by a property management company, took from their margins, sure. and then that's why we see so many vacants, because really, they, they just didn't want to put the money into those vacant properties yeah. to get them turned over. They were cash flowing enough, but, you know, that's... Nowhere near what it was before. Exactly, and that's why it's time to let it go. Yeah. All right, so let's go inside and take a look. All right. It was set to 65. Good. So once the electricity kicks on, he's gonna have a fat bill. So we'll help this guy out a little bit. All right, so one of the things to realize is all these properties normally are gonna be the same makeup. And this one is two bedroom, one bath. So they could either be a one bedroom, one bath or two bedroom, one bath. So Matt, from your perspective, you're looking at this property, right? Obviously there's a make ready that needs to be had here. Yep. From the smell, there's probably something in the refrigerator that we don't, don't want to open the refrigerator. Don't Let's just start door. with that right there. Rule clear. number one, if you yeah. don't know how long there's been no power, <laughs> don't open the Do not open the fridge. Just get rid of it. Yes. <laughs> Trust me, you will bang me later. That is number one tip when you are walking into a vacant property. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Matt, if you were going to do this property, what would you do? Okay. So right off the bat, obviously we're going to be cleaning the place out, right? right? We're going to put a fresh coat of paint on it. and. 
from there, we, you know, we might do new AC grills, new light covers, uh, very, very minimal Paint stuff. The, door. the ceiling yeah. fan looks fine. That'll get cleaned up and it'll look almost brand new. Yeah. Okay, so some of the stuff we've seen is people assume, oh, well, it's a you know middle or lower income neighborhood, so I really don't need to do much at all. Right. So they might not paint these walls. They might not fix up the, the patch in the wall and things like that. But you need to make this a place, no matter what the price point is, it needs to be a nice place that someone's gonna be comfortable calling right. home. Sure. Now, the floor. I see he's got like stick down. What would you do? So in all of my personal rental properties, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to a vinyl floor throughout. I'm okay. doing no carpet. I would go ahead and budget. You have such a small area. Small area it's right. not gonna be a huge investment, maybe a little bit more than you were planning on spending because you could probably get away with these floors cleaning them up. Uh, but I would start moving myself towards a vinyl product. It's literally bomb proof right. and it lasts forever. You're not gonna be having to change it out. You can get the planks so that you don't have to do sheets anymore like you had to do in the old days. Yeah. Right. And it's just, it's a product that I swear by. So all of my rental properties are all, when I have turnovers, if they don't have vinyl, I put vinyl in. So for this area, we're saying probably put some new flooring in. I would, I would plan to if it was paint. Easy. New switch plate covers, clean this, clean the grill, deep, deep clean throughout, deep clean. Okay. Probably get away with the kitchen just being cleaned up. So let's let's go oh, in yeah, the kitchen and, and take a look here. What pops out at you of things that you automatically say, this is what I would change or this is what I would fix? Well, I mean, you gotta, something's going on with these doors here. So they're chipped up. You can probably get away with painting them because they're in pretty decent shape. Yeah. And then look underneath here, well, we got a little bit of water damage, so you might have to do- There might be a leak or something. It's, these boxes are have too much water damage and you're gonna have to go with, with some new cabinets. Now, what if you were gonna paint these, what color would you paint these for longevity? A white or a gray. And all right, now let's talk about the cabinet, uh, the countertops. Yeah. Give me, uh, I, I looked at it, I saw it, you saw it also. So there's a couple of chips mm -hmm. in the countertops, so Depending on what you want to do, so this this Formica or the, uh, I forget what they call it, it's like the faux granite, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm talking about, the prefab mm -hmm. stuff, you can probably get away with that in here. Mm -hmm. Granite these days is actually really affordable. I don't know that I would do granite here, and you know, again, it's it's not a lot of money, but it is a little bit more money. It is more money. You definitely got to do something in here because Absolutely. the countertops are chipped up and you're going to have to fix them regardless. So, okay. right. light fixture, would you, eh. I'd probably change that. I'd probably change it too. If you're talking, it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Yeah, it's not you know. a lot of money. But what other things would you do in here? I mean, it's pretty simple. Obviously the floor. Very simple, yeah. Honestly, as long as it's functional and it's cosmetically pleasing, I wouldn't spend way too much just because the yeah. rents aren't going to jump up, jump because up just because of it, because of the area. Right. Yeah, and you know, that's, that's an important thing for people to realize is you can put all this money into it, but it's not gonna go from $750 to $1,200 a month. No. And no, so that's no, the thing, no, a lot no, of times people think like, I'll put granite in, I'll do all these nice things because the place that I rent for $1,800 exactly. a month has that place. <laughs> and that's a, that's a common right. mistake people right. do right. is they put all this money into it thinking that they're gonna get so much more, they're gonna increase the NOI, so it's gonna increase what it's worth. Yeah. And they realize the market bears what the market bears. So. Let's go take a look at the rest of the house and see what we got. Okay. So you're probably wondering why we're sweating so much here. And here's the deal. This is Houston, Texas. We're about 10 minutes north of downtown. It's the middle of summer and it's hot and it's humid. And this is what you get when you walk properties here. This is the look that you have. Get used to it. Get used to it, exactly. <laughs> we should show Katie's makeup smearing all over her face. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so we're in this room. First time coming in this room. One of the first things we both notice all three of us is the fact that they covered the vent for the air conditioning and we wonder why and sometimes you wonder why do people do what they do when you yeah. come to these properties you never know I have no idea it, it makes no sense. sense so we we're talking earlier we noticed that pretty much all the units there's central air there's yes. a pretty new thermostat yep. but there's also windows everybody has window units now again we're in Houston it's super high yep. you're in an old building the AC probably hasn't been replaced in a long time so I have seen a lot of times where people have central AC but they add a window unit just to, to help, help kick up especially in those super super hot months yeah and especially if you're someone who really likes it cold 
and that window unit will just add that extra yeah. push to help you. Covering the vent, I guarantee you, will not make it cold. F1, <laughs> uncover the AC vent. <laughs> cover the AC vent. Right. Yes. So paint, floors, touch up all the sheetrock, and then this light fixture, you probably want to either, I don't know, try to clean it, put a globe on it. But other than that, I mean, paint floors and you're in and out of And it. I would also say switch plate covers. I mean, that's yeah, if you're gonna do switch plate covers in any room, you don't want to over it. Yeah, and that, it's the little things. Even, yes. even the door, putting new door handles on. Yeah. Painting the doors, hitting them with paint, and then new door handles, that makes the difference. It know? does. And you want, them, you want them to match. You don't want it, one thing that says I cut corners on this make ready or this rehab more than anything is when you have white switch plates in one room and the old beige ones in another. Absolutely. Or you got brush nickel doorknobs in one room and old brass gold doorknobs in the other room. Yeah. That screams, I did this as cheap as possible and I cut every corner that I could. Because right. now somebody's thinking, well, what else did they skimp on? Exactly. Right? What else did they not do? Yeah. So make everything match. You'll yeah. save yourself some headache and, and people will have that extra level of, okay, they did this right. Right, exactly. You know? All right, let's go look in the bathroom. Pretty, pretty basic. Again, we got the, we've got the covers. I don't know what that's for or why, but they seem very proud. YouTube told me to do this. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm gonna say that uh, probably need to probably need to replace this thing here. This is pretty. Uh, it looks pretty rough. Yeah, in a, a simple small vanity like this, you're not gonna spend a whole bunch of money. Back in the mirror. Now I see they have four switches. So I don't know, the bathroom's not that big to have yeah. four switches. We have no electricity, so. Yeah, so we can't tell what it is. Um, the tub, what, why, don't, why don't you lay down in there, Steve? I'm not getting in that tub, for the record. If somebody did want to get in that tub, it, honestly, clean that thing out, depending yeah. if you're, if you're, um. It's not bad, I mean, it's got some rust and stuff in the bottom, but it's yeah. not, it's not horrible. You know, another thing too, we've done this in rental properties, especially with tile, is you can get like a reglaze kit mm -hmm. from Home Depot. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks or something like that. And it, you, it's basically like a spray on product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it makes it look, even if you had like subway tile for your tile surround, makes it look brand new. And so it's a lot cheaper than going the route of getting a whole new tile surround or a whole new drop in tub and it looks brand new. Going and dropping a new tub in and doing all this, and the money you would spend, you're not gonna get more right No. Yeah. So that's why you gotta think about, what, am I getting a dollar? If I put a dollar in, am I getting $2 back? Right, right. Now, this is something I think is important to, to talk about, which it seems like nothing, and a lot of people may leave this. This is the stuff that causes renters, when they come in to look at it, and they see this, it, they don't know if it's trash or what. Right. Remove all these things. Yes. These little things that you think are helpful because it's here is not helpful at all because people do not like to see other people's trash. Right. What you think is helpful, they may say, I don't even know what this is. Is this permanent? And it's I don't a, know. It's a small room. Yeah. It takes up a lot of yeah. space. It makes it look yeah. even more smaller by leaving this in here, in my yeah. opinion. It might be helpful too to just put up a, a cabinet above, above. the toilet for storage. That would be much that better would be really... if you went that route. Yeah, yeah I agree. Sure. Yeah, and definitely take this down. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Let's go on. Matt, you and I were in another house and we were talking about foundation issues. Yes. So do me a favor and do what you did last time. Oh, you're okay. and show me what you see. So a lot of times when I'm walking a property, when you close your eyes, it forces your basically your brain to use your equilibrium more, and so your balance. And so what I like to do, if I think that I feel a slope, I'll go back and walk that same slope with my eyes closed, and you can really feel it a lot more because you're you're not using your sight, your body's having to use that natural equilibrium it has, and so you can really feel the slope a lot more when yeah. you do it. And, and understand, a vacant, a property that has a foundation issue is not a big deal. It's not, a, especially no. in Houston, it's uh, very common. Yeah. Just knowing about it is, is, is good. One, you really don't see a whole lot of sheetrock cracks. There wasn't yeah. a lot of cracks in the brick when we walked the exterior, so it's really not that big of a problem. Right. Plus you're renting it out, so it's also not that big of a problem. The other thing to consider too is when you have something like this where you have one building, one structure with multiple units in it, now all of a sudden you have to start thinking about, if I just adjust the foundation for this one, and unit, up what else? happens to the units next time? Right. Correct. All right, so same thing in this room, is that because you're obviously the master bedroom, I'm guessing, Yeah. Yeah. of the two. It's definitely much bigger. Yeah. It, 
Same thing, floors, paint, clean this place up. We're already doing the light plates. We're probably changing the light fixtures. And uh, there's a hole in the wall. You, obviously, we're gonna fix a hole in the wall, right? right? So if you're somebody out there who's looking at a property and you're thinking about not fixing a hole in the wall, <laughs> yeah, we start from start from zero. Go back to, go back to okay. step zero and, and investing. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I know this. It, we know this, but all the trash, pull all the trash out. Yeah, do not leave anything in the property. You no. want it clean, vacant, yes. and they want to picture their stuff in the property. Correct. Right. And go back to that little box, whatever it was. If there's something in the house that you have to explain to every person that comes in, you probably should get rid of it. It's a good rule. <laughs> Make sure that it's super clean, there's nothing funky that you have to explain. If you have to explain it, get rid of it. Right. All right, everyone, so we just walked this property, and just to recap, this is a 25 unit property, they have nine vacants. And what we want to think about when we're looking at these properties is what would we do to fix the situation? Yeah. Or if we're buying this property, would I buy this and is this a good deal? And your, from your experience and from your perspective, if you were giving someone advice that was either thinking of buying a property like this yeah. or maybe they have this situation, right? what advice would you give people? Well, so everybody with multifamily, if you're selling it, you're trying to sell it on pro forma. Yeah. And if you're buying it, you're trying to buy it on actual. Exactly. Right? So depending on which side of the fence I'm on with this transaction, that's going to determine what I would do. If I'm selling the property, I'm going to spend the money and get this thing rented up as fast as possible. I want this to be 100% occupied so I can drive the revenue number up, my NOI up, which is going to help me with my purchase price. If I'm buying this property, I'd prefer if they didn't do anything and let me do it when I buy it. And then I'm going to factor in maybe spending a little bit more on each unit so I have the product that I want to have. And then I'll start turning that over as the other units that are currently occupied start becoming vacant. So it's it's going to depend on the situation of the investor who's looking at this property, whether you're looking to own and operate or sell it, or you're looking to buy that property. That'll determine which path I go. Yeah, and, and I think what's important to understand too is if you're buying this property or a property like this, understand that you're not going to be able to have a full on-site staff. Correct. So you're going to have to do a trade-off. So if I was an out-of-state investor and I saw, hey, 25 units in Houston, I would be thinking, okay, who's going to run it? Yeah. And what is that going to cost me? And it's the little things like cutting the grass and these other things that you don't think about that you have to factor into the cost because that will start eating in to your profits. And all of a sudden you're going to go, whoa, I don't have enough money to do a make ready. Right. And if you get on the back side of that, where now you have nine vacant properties, it could financially hurt you. And I, sure. I just don't think ever would I want to not fill a vacancy to get it rented to producing revenue, in my opinion, right. no matter what. If I'm, especially if I own it and I'm selling it, I most definitely would want to sell it because that is a key indication that either I'm not running my business correctly right. or I'm motivated, which is gonna be reflected in the price. Right. It's the same thing when we're selling single family, multifamily. Anytime there's a problem, the person buying it is always, what's the situation? Why is there an issue? Right. Why is this vacant? Why is there not even vacant property? They, they assume that something with the property and they're buying some problem that they don't have, right? Yeah. A lot of people make fear-based decisions. And so the fear is I'm gonna spend a million and a half bucks on this 25 unit and I'm getting this huge problem that I don't know about, I don't know how to fix, or it's gonna cost me more money than I planned on to fix. Right. So if I'm selling it or operating it, you want it to be a put together package. Yeah. So that that person doesn't have that fear when they go to buy it. And so yeah, you gotta remember you're running a business and that business has a lot of moving parts. This has 25 moving parts. Yeah. And of those, there's a lot more that spider out from there. Sure. And you gotta remember that chances are it's a business model challenge, not a property challenge right. that we're seeing. Absolutely. So one of the bids we got for this property is a $2,300 bank ready cost. So per unit. Per unit. Yeah. So if you think about it, within three months, you're gonna get your money back. So right. it's, it's a three month investment essentially. Right. And you would get that rented, and we know that these would rent very quickly, correct? Yes. Yeah. So again, think about it. Yes, it's gonna cost you $2,300, but it's an investment because you're gonna make that money return. You have to do it. You have to do you're it. You're not gonna rent it if you don't spend the money. That's the way business works. Right. You've got to put the investment in to get it back out. One of the things also is we talk about putting in nicer coin. It's a little bit more money, 
but over the term, when you turn the property again, you're not gonna have to spend that money. But you were saying there's tenants who have been here for a while. Yeah, five to 10 years. Five to 10 years. You spend another thousand dollars to get the nicer exactly. jacket and you have the same tenant for 10 years when you're making 700 bucks a month. Who cares about spending the thousand bucks? Yeah, and so think about it. Invest. It costs you three months of investment and you can get five to 10 year return. Who would not want to right. do that? With those, if you took that to the stock market or anywhere else, they'd go, absolutely, I do it all day, every day. And before everybody watching gets, you know, oh, tenants don't last that long, that obviously assumes that you're following the right systems for, you know, screening your tenants, you're getting a good tenant in place, you're running all your background checks, you're checking credit, you're making sure their tenant history is good, and you're a good operating exactly. landlord, and you're treating the care of your tenants. Yeah, so. And they, they want to stay, they don't want to keep moving. Right. They would rather be here and stay here because they've got friends, family in the area, so they're happy staying. They just want to be treated correct, and when something breaks, they want it fixed. And if you can make it nicer, they're more apt to stay and keep staying. And that is how you get the return month after month, year after year on these types of investments. Absolutely. So you have to make sure that even after you do the fix up and the rehab and you get it leased up, you still have to pay attention to your unit, to your tenant. Hey, Bigger Pockets, so thank you for watching us today. Again, if you like this, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe to the Bigger Pockets channel. We're gonna be back with more. This is Steve Rosenberg, Matt Trenchard, Katie Malfer. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.